Legend of the War here, and today we've got a rating you one man doom stack covering Azazel. So we're going up against the Dark Elves. Malachus at the helm there with a pretty damn strong Dark Elf army, and he's got three armies coming in as reinforcements, but overall it's about three full stacks. So I reckon, he, based on what I'm looking at here, he's pretty much perfected um, Azazel. He's got Slanesha's Blade, which I believe Azazel's the only one that's actually able to get Slanesha's Blade. Um, due to a dilemma that only he will get in Immortal Empires. So he's got also the Armor of Destiny, Talisman of Preservation, Wand of Jet, which I don't think that one there is overly important, and the Crown of Everlasting Conquest for Regen. If we have a look at his resistances, because the thing is with making a one-man doomstack, the resistances is usually the key. You want to get as close to 90% as you possibly can. We're at 46% ward save, which it's very difficult to get that to 90%. Only a couple of characters can do it. Uh, we've also got so many abilities. 50% physical resistance. So he's actually at 90% uh, physical resistance, which that's not too difficult to get to. And um, against magical weapons, it'll just be the 46%. His spell resistance is 15%. Okay. Um, looking at this, though, we're not dealing with too many enemies here that actually have magical attacks. I don't think there's any, really. Kind of surprising that Malachus' um, weapon, Destroyer, doesn't do magic attack. Especially considering how um, how frequent other uh, legendary uh, weapons actually have that, you know, unique weapons. Anyway, um, let's jump in here and see how he goes. Now, interesting thing to note is that I haven't played a Azazel campaign yet. Not a single turn of it. So, I'm not really that familiar with Azazel. But I'm used the um, Lord of Slanesh a little bit, so I know that the uh, Slicing Shards Bombardment spell is probably the way to go for get rid of the infantry. Um, I don't really think we need to do any buffs and debuffs, given that his stats are already ridiculously high. Um, and yeah, he's a small flying single entity. So, looking at that, you know, he's dishing out ridiculous amounts of damage, but that's largely thanks to the Blade of Slanesh. Uh, huge bonus versus infantry and bonus versus large. So that's going to account for nearly 200 melee attack when dealing with large creatures. So in order to block that, Malekith needs to have over 100 melee defense, even have a chance of blocking it. That probably means that um, Azazel will hit 92% of the time, which is the cap. I don't think you can hit any more than that. Um, jeez. Alright, well, let's just see how it goes. Moving. Come fight me, if that is your wish. So one thing that Azazel doesn't have is a lot of armor, but that's okay if you've got the resistances, that compensates you. Anyway, going up against Dark Elves, you don't really need a lot of armor since most of their stuff's armor piercing anyway. So first thing we want to do here, take out the flying units, and then I'll see about taking out the spellcasters. So, Temptator, he gets an additional 20% damage resistance there. Okay, that'll be good. And Malakas is just going down super quick. So the only way he could get any more ward save is if he picked up the Sword of Cain instead of Slanesh's Blade. But Slanesh's Blade is far superior because it has absolutely no drawbacks. It doesn't cause you any campaign problems. Oh my god, that was so quick. All looking pretty good so far. So what I want to try and do is try and take out as many of the um, single entities first, and then we can just use slicing shards on the melee infantry. If I pop that down there, I'm pretty sure they'll dodge it, but let's just see. Oh, maybe they won't. <laughs> they had plenty of time. And they kind of did dodge it a little bit, but... 
They had plenty of time to get out of there. That spell takes quite a while to actually get off. Yes. Alright, we need to take out spell casters. We're also going to be casting Spirit Leech on us constantly. That's it. Good. Oh, he seems really good at like landing and actually hitting something. Usually flying units as they're coming down is really quite derpy. Oh, so we can only use this if he's on the ground. Boom. He just slips right through units as if there's no collision. That's that's very powerful. Come on. Because a lot of these units will just get stuck in this sort of situation here. But he doesn't. Really good. Stop these damn spirit leeches. Are they doing much? Not really, but it all adds up. Probably more damage than these other idiots are doing. Because he doesn't have that much spell resistance. And that is uh, magic damage. Alright, there's another one over here. Let's get rid of that wizard. So I reckon this will be useful for when you're trying to get out of combat, which we're trying to do right now. Don't worry about my own spell so much. Oh, I there we go. She gone. There should be one more general. Alright, so let's get in here and have a look at Sonic Boom. Let's see what that does. It's pretty good. Didn't do a ton of damage, but it's good for knocking you out of the way so you can get out of combat. So far, I'm really impressed with Azazel here. Like, I can see a lot of utility in just the smoothness and how we can actually utilize them. The fact that you can get out of combat from the ground so easily. So if you're in an engagement where you don't actually want to be in, it's okay. You know, I'm not seeing them really taking much damage from anything. Apart from the spells, just a little bit, I suppose. You know, this uh, slicing shards is probably not the best spell ever, but it, it is doing some damage. And it's good for getting rid of all the bloody infantry. He's got no problem taking out these single entities. And with such a high melee defense, right? If they want any chance of hitting him, they need to have about 120 melee attack. You know, for a reasonable chance. That being said, even with zero melee attack, you have an 8% chance of attacking here. Honestly, popping down stand or die here probably isn't even doing anything. So what's going on here? He's also got... He's got so many bloody abilities. He's got this domineering aura. Which... And so he's also got um, a mortis engine effect on top of that. Paragon of excess. Oh my god. Look how they dance. That's pretty nuts. So he'd be just racking up loads of kills now. Just while in combat. Yeah, because of the serpentine tail. Uh, it's fairly short range though. Already racking up a lot of kills. At this stage here, I'm not going to lie, I think he might actually be better than Archeon. I don't think Kolek was. But Azazel here might just be. He's just debuffing everything. He's so... His stats are just so ridiculously high. The fact that he gets such a good weapon without any drawbacks. The only thing to consider here is that we're not going up against much with magical attacks. And maybe that would have made a difference. It's 
still got a good amount of ward safe, but if we were going up against an army of demons, maybe that would have been a little bit more trouble. Because all these guys here can only do 10% of their damage. Now, when casting this, it seems like it's going to be best to just cast it on myself. Otherwise, they do try to dodge it. We're overcasting this. So, 5 extra winds of magic for 50% extra damage. So, the only benefit of this is if you need damage in a hurry. That's about it. Otherwise, you're just running the risk of miscast. Because, in terms of per damage per winds of magic, it's exactly the same. But I'm sure we can afford a miscast or two. The Lord over here. Fire Wizard. Okay, I don't need to worry about that one so much because a fireball is probably not even going to hit us. Very well. 170,000 damage done already. Oh, yeah, and his army abilities. None of which are particularly good. The slash ones kind of suck. Just keeping an eye on whenever he gets attacked. I'm just not seeing his hit points ever drop. They're not hitting him. His melee defense is just too high. No, he's just never getting hit. <laughs> it's pretty funny. He's really bloody good. Not that many of the infantry remaining. Not too much of anything remaining, but the bounce of power is still very much not in our favor. Trying to get in there for a visual, but too much of a clusterfuck. I can't see anything. He's right in the center here. <laughs> there, there he is. Okay, so one thing that is happening to him is he is getting a little bit stun locked a little bit. Just a little bit. See, even if they don't technically land a hit on him, they can still stun lock him. Probably shouldn't be using Sonic Boom while that's going on. Otherwise, I'm just saving their own units. I really wish I could see just how much he's healed so far, but it's just not possible to do that now. Alright, I think we can speed this up and let the rest of the battle play its course now. Yeah, he's definitely still landing hits. And the best thing for to do here is just, just leave him be. 
Don't bother about issuing commands, there's just no need. Apart from spells. Because no matter what he's fighting, yeah, there we go. He's kicking their ass. Yeah, that's really bloody good. Alright, now to have a look and see what his actual defeat traits are. What is what he's accumulated so far. So, 1.9 thousand damage done. Sorry, that's 1.9 thousand kills. He did like 200 thousand damage. He could have taken on a, essentially an unlimited number of Dark Elves. They could have, he could have gone up against a larger army, it's possible. Uh, hard to do though in Warhammer 3, the AI just doesn't build as many armies. Um, as it did in Warhammer 2 at least. But yeah, there was just nothing they could do about it. At all. So this is, I definitely think it's better than Kolek. Because while he wasn't hitting ha as hard per shot, he has higher melee attack and he's smaller, which is better, makes him more defensible. Um, and if he was going into a duel with Kolek, one thing to keep in mind is both of them having magic blades, right? Magic weapons. Um, Azazel has more ward save, so he'd actually end up taking less damage. You die, so I may live. All right, now let's have a look at him. My whims control their every Okay. Move. Yeah, it's got a lot of really good abilities. So, passive ability Serpent Tail. It's got a very small effect range, so they have to be really close touching him. But he is essentially a mortis engine, so yeah, very much anti-infantry for sure. And anti-large. Alright, let's have a look at these defeat traits. So, Prince of Damnation. Okay, that's not really important. Okay, so first thing he got was Throt the Unclean trait. That's a big tick. That's one if you want to get a one-man doomstack, kind of need to get that. Wades through Gore. There you go. That's another one. He took out Nakai, good. That's a that's one that I do recommend getting because the bonus versus large and melee defense is really good, but is you got to go all the way to Cathay to get that, unless you cheat. Um, no, I don't think that's a defeat trait. Soros Mighty got Krokgar's trait. He got Wurzag's trait. He got Trolls. Uh, sorry, he got uh, Throg's trait, which is good. It's not essential. Um, Ungrim's defeat trait. Skull Slasher, that's for dealing, uh, getting rid of Morgo. Don't think he needed that. Got rid of um, Eltharion, oh, Marcus Wolfhearts. It was exhilarating. Bonus first infantry. So that one there is um, Queek Headtakers. And there's um, Malekiths. There's, if I'm not mistaken, he's gotten more than 10 defeat traits here. I'm going to have to count this out. I think he might actually have more than defeat traits. I'm on 10. So there's um, Archaeons and there's Hellebrons. Let me just count this out. we got 1, 2. That's not it. Uh, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay, so I previously had a theory that you could only get 10 defeat traits. Not true. This is actually... Oh, there's actually more in here. I didn't even look at it. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> there's way more. <laughs> Just, I didn't scroll down enough. Hey, hey, oh, hang on a second here. So we got Blood Quencher. Uh, that's um, Scarbrands. There's Sigvolds. So there's... Um, yeah, the Physical Resistance. Village. And... Um, oh, it's got Kolek. What's it called? Um, Torox and Gorse. Okay, how many actual defeat traits did he actually get here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 defeat traits. Okay, well that throws my original theory out the window because previously I've never seen any Lord get more than 10 defeat traits and every time they capped out it would always be at 10. But that was just maybe a coincidence. It seems like it's true. You can actually get 
up to, I guess, 40 defeat traits, although getting actual 40 is not really possible because you'll get all these other traits in here. But I think what he did with his campaign is he went around not getting any other traits and specifically got defeat traits. This is the most amount of effort I think I've ever seen anyone put into acquiring like a one-man doom stack. Honestly, some of these ones here are not really that big of a deal, especially the missile resistance one. Like he's already... The only way that that missile resistance is going to matter is if he's going up against magic missiles like Sisters of Avalon. But he's so fast and, and small that he can just get into combat and then they can't shoot him anymore. But yeah, so that finally puts um, my uh, theory to rest there. So you can definitely get more than 10 defeat traits. Um, but you just have a limit to how many traits you can get overall. Right, cool. So yeah, in terms of um, what he's done here, he got all the ones that I would want him to get. All the melee defense ones, all the bonus versus large ones, all the hit points ones, physical resistance. Um, he didn't get Azag's defeat trait, which you don't really need, but spell resistance would have helped a little bit against the spirit, uh, spirit leeches. Again, don't think you really need it. Um, 10 out of 10 for effort for this. Absolutely, probably the, probably the cleanest one-man doom stack I've ever seen in terms of just making sure that it's all about the one-man doom stack. Um, the only item I think in here they didn't need was the Wand of Jet, because honestly though, finding a good arcane item can be difficult these days, because most arcane items are just absolute rubbish now. Because um, yeah, that one just doesn't really provide any serious value, nor do any of them really. There's a, there's a handful out there, but I don't think the Warriors of Chaos have anything that they absolutely needed. Um, and then in terms of making this a one-man, like, how is he in terms of one-man Doomstack? Pretty much 10 out of 10. Um... I think there's very few characters that would have higher value as a one-man Doomstack than this particular build, largely because Azazel is able to you know, debuff the enemy so much, buff himself by so much, and he has the Slanesh's Blade, which is, in my opinion, the actual best weapon in the game. A lot of people look towards the Sword of Cain, but I hate the drawbacks that the Sword of Cain causes. The Slanesh's Blade causes no drawbacks whatsoever, and of course, you get a little bit less ward save, but Without the drawbacks, um, I think that's better. So anyway, yeah, 10 out of 10 for effort, 10 out of 10 doom, uh, one man doom stack there. I think this is better than Archeon. I think it was better than, definitely better than Colex. Um, really, really good. And better than even um, um, Valkyrie the Bloody. So we'll see if we get the other two, or well, other Warriors of Chaos one man doom stack sent in later. It's just funny that I'm just sort of getting them through one at a time here, um, one after another. But anyway, so in terms of the Warriors of Chaos, we could still see a Festus one-man Doomstack, a Village one-man Doomstack, um, Sigvold, and we did Bellicor back in Realm of Chaos, but I wonder if it would be different in Immortal Empires. Anyway, that's the end of this one here, guys. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Well done to this guy in terms of getting the effort to, uh, to do all of those defeat traits and actually um, um, disprove my theory. See, my original theory was that you could only get 10 defeat traits because that's just my experience of it, but this here proves that actually incorrect. Anyway, that's the end of this one. Appreciate you guys, and I'll see you next time, fuckers. Bye.